What's going on everybody? Welcome back to the channel and another video. Today we're going to be doing another open cup and this is the color palette we're using. I have a titanium white, a magenta, violet, cerulean blue, fluorescent orange. This magenta and violet were mixed with just maybe a couple grams of titanium white, trying to just lighten them up a little bit because I know when they dry they're going to dry darker. All the colors are mixed two parts pouring medium, one part paint. The pouring medium I use is the Artist Loft pouring medium from Michaels. They also have one to two drops of my coconut milk hair serum inside. And with that, I just, I want to, I want to get going. <clears throat> so, <clears throat> excuse me. I just mixed up my paints, so there are some bubbles in it. I am going to do a thing that I used to do to kind of help with cells. Um, I always did it when I was having difficulty getting cells to form initially when I first started. I'm going to take the bottom of my cup and I'm just going to put a little bit of silicone on it after I've put the base coat on. Just, I mean, that looks like a whole lot. And just around the rim on the inside, put a little bit of, it's kind of like greasing a cake pan. Just put a little bit of oil there and we'll see what that does for us. But if you're having a difficulty with cells, that might help you just a little bit. All right. So how's everybody doing today? Yeah, you. I'm talking to you guys. How are y'all? <laughs> I hope you're doing great. I'm doing wonderful. Right now, I'm probably in Detroit. Um, spending a couple days up there. Visiting my, my better half. So, let's see. I don't know. Nah, well... Let's not do that. So this fluorescent orange and the blue might have really nasty, muddy colors if they mix, which they will if they go through the open cup under the rim. So if I put a barrier of white between them, it should be good. And then the magenta shouldn't have any real effect on it. Nice spot of magenta. Then we got a little violet action going on all right now i think we're ready to set these colors loose out into the world so i'm kind of lifting the cup setting the cup down chopping the layers and then you can kind of see it from the beat around that outer rim there are lines so i just used that we're going to continue with our theme doing the same color orders and for the fluorescent orange we will put a white and the white is heavy so it starts to sink almost immediately so I want to try to get that, that orange on there first if I can before it sinks we're already getting some really interesting cell effects which is cool and I think that's mainly due to the silicone that is on the rim of the cup. I really do. All right. So I'm going to do the same thing, just lifting up and down, chopping it, chopping the colors. Letting the layers kind of get cut. And releasing only a little bit of it at a time. All right, so we just did violet. So now it should be a blue, then a white, then an orange. Ooh, almost grabbed the orange, you guys. Already trying to mess up the painting. Let's see. I want to see what would happen. If I did mix them. So there's a little bit of this on my finger and then the blue. Let's see what that turns into. Yeah, do you, do you see the color on the tip of the finger right there? That's not a pretty color, you guys. So that's why I'm trying to keep them separate. 
All right, going back to our magenta. Man, I'm liking this already, you guys. It's looking really cool. I'm wondering what will happen if I was to take a heat gun to it. And see if, if we can coax some kind of cells to come out early. So we get a better idea on what kind of composition we're working with. And I know if I want to stop these colors from rolling under or if I don't. And right now I'm seeing most of the really brilliant looking cells are towards the center still. So I should be safe to allow the outside edge to kind of roll under a little bit. There is some pretty cool looking stuff going on throughout. Let me put just a little pop of white in there. There we go. All right, and then we're gonna release and chop the layers as we do. One chop, two, three. Oh yeah, some of these colors, you guys, really beautiful. So, should have a, a little string of white going through here now between the, on the opposite sides of this cerulean blue. Mm-hmm. This is pretty. So far, anyway. Didn't put a puppy pad down, so I'm getting paint all over my table, which is fine. It'll just peel right off, but... All right. Now that's a cool looking cell right there. Right there on the opposite side of the cup. It's gonna look, it's gonna get a little squished, but that's okay. I'm putting a little bit of white in the corners. And then I can take and put some white around the edge when we get there. Man, all right. Let's raise that up. I didn't chop that one this time. And the next color we're gonna go to is Cerulean Blue. Actually, you know what? I wanna have a decent band of white, so. I'm gonna put a bigger layer of white right here because we will be able to see that with a little cerulean blue between it. But I wanna have a nice ring of white going through the piece. And I think that that will really help these colors pop. And fluorescent orange. We're starting to get towards the end, so as I always do, I'm gonna make the layers smaller and smaller. So that way the layers are thinner and it's able to be swiped across with our cookie cutter. So we kind of break up that center section that's gonna want to do whatever it wants to do. Tiny spot of white because I think this is it. I think right here is where I'm going to. Oh, yeah. I just can't wait to see that white. That's what I'm waiting for. I'm going to take some of this paint here and just go over the spots that are the hardest for the paint to touch. Because Typically, if the paints are, or the canvas is dry, the paints don't want to flow. So we're just giving them that little bit of assistance that they might need preemptively, trying to help, you know what I mean? Help the composition do what we want it to do instead of it distorting, disturbing. There's that. A little bit up here, and we are almost completely out of white. 
which is all right. All right, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take this and spin it until that surface tension breaks. And then I'm gonna take these other colors that are in the center, because remember they're thin layers. And I'm just gonna swipe the rim of the cup over them. And that is that. I'm gonna set this thing down here. Now we need to recenter it because the, he the the body of the paint is right in the right below the center of the canvas. So we're gonna do a little minor adjustment here, and then we bring it back. You can see where the weight of that paint is, so it's right there in the middle. I'm gonna take my heat gun now and try to see if we can get anything to come forward before we stretch it. I have a feeling we're gonna get some pretty cool looking stuff. Oh yeah. I always like creating the cells pre-stretch because then after I stretch, it has continued to expand and thin out those layers. It's made the cells that are there already very large. And then since it's thinned out the layers even more, then you can go through and actually create even more cells, which gives you those pinwheel cells and those cells within cells. And uh, it was a little harder than I would have liked I have had a lot of caffeine this morning, but we're getting some pretty interesting looking colors right now, and I'm happy with it. Um, there was a lot of paint on the canvas, I'm aware. So I'm trying to, if I can, just stretch out those layers, get some of that excess paint off. Oh man, look at that, whoa. Well, that is a little bit of fantastic right there. I'm loving that, you guys, already. We haven't even tried the, the heat gun after the stretch yet. But that is so cool looking. And you see that white band, that thick white band that we put in earlier. It's just right there. And now you're seeing that since we thinned out those layers, we're getting even more cells coming through. Beautiful little cells. Just further augmenting the piece. It almost looks like a foamy sea with a fluorescent orange sun in the background or something. I, I don't know, what do you guys see? That's kind of what I'm seeing. Very, very pretty. I'm loving it. I might want to try one thing with the center, and if it works, great. If it doesn't, great. I'm about to sneeze. They normally come in twos, goodness. <coughs> Excuse me. Whoa. Maybe not twos this time. Okay. I do want to take a torch to some of these areas that don't have much going on, because I feel like they can be so much better, but. I'll never know unless I torch, so. And actually, that didn't do a whole heck of a lot, so that's okay. Because it's not that I don't like those areas. I'm just trying to add a little bit more interest to them. You know, maybe I could just take a little bit of silicone. Because there are layers underneath that. I know that. Very, very clearly know that. All right, so a little bit of silicone. I'm trying to find a dry spot where I can prop my elbows so I don't get it everywhere. It might not even do anything. I don't know. This might just be some stubborn paints, you guys. So I definitely didn't mix this the same exact way that I do for my chameleon cells. So, 
That's part of the reason chameleon cells are so difficult because they're very nuanced. They're, they're strange. But anyway, let me bring you guys down. We're going to check this thing out. I love it. The detail in this thing is just stunning. That fluorescent orange actually stayed very vibrant in there. And that has to be because we separated it with that white. Because you saw how muddy and nasty that color would have turned if it would have overmixed. But there's the center. I love it, it looks pretty cool. If you want to watch another video just like this, click the screen right now and I'll see you there.